Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to talk to you all about your journey today, Rose. Welcome. I'm so stoked you're here. I'm so happy to be here. This is going to be so much fun. Awesome. All right, well, let's dive in. So I heard this uh, quote that I'm just kind of now obsessed with a couple of months ago now that talked about how really some big life changes can come from one single decision, one single time of saying yes. So it's really caused me to reflect on like, even in the little moments of what did I say yes to that got me to right here right now? So I'm just curious for you, What did you say yes to that really is, has propelled you into where you're at in your grant writing journey today? Well, first of all, as a writer, I love that you're leading with a quote and something that inspired you. That is my love language quote. It'd be better if I could remember where it was from so I could attribute, but whoever (laughs) you were, you really inspired me. (laughs) The feeling, the feeling is all that matters. Yeah. I like this idea as well of being a yes person. And I have to say just traveling, traveling hands down would be my one decision. And if I, if I can explain on that, basically I graduated university with a degree in English and creative writing. And I don't know if you know much about the field, but there's no like clear path with that. It's not like I was ready to go into something that was going to make me a bunch of money. So I decided to travel instead, just like take this risk. And it turned out to be the most amazing, you know, traveling's great in general, but for me, it was so transformative. I I, uh, sold all my things, packed my life into a 40 liter, like tiny hiking backpack. And my husband and I just started traveling and that turned into five years of travel. And along the way, I learned how to be a writer, you know, more than I would have learned in school. All of my favorite authors talk about, you can't write until you experience life. And I knew that I couldn't sit in a cubicle or a library and get like the necessary training to actually be a good writer. So for me, learning to travel, was, you know, learning to trust that inner voice, to take risks in my writing, to not take myself so seriously (laughs) and actually enjoy what I love. So, um, and that led me to also grant writing. So just an incredible yes moment of traveling after college changed my life forever. So that's, that's what I would have to say. Oh, I love that. Okay, we could talk for hours about just your traveling journey. (laughs) Do we really good? Um, But I would love to know kind of how you made this leap. So you had been writing, little bit of background. Mm -hmm. You'd even had a writing course that you were experimenting with, right? That Mm -hmm. you um, were profitable. You were making money uh, teaching other people how to to write. And then you decided to uh, branch out and really get into freelance grant writing. So talk to me about that transition and how it went from all writing to grant writing. Gladly. Yeah. So I am the founder of a writing services company called Ideas Right Now. Sorry about the plug, but I have to. No, Uh, we'll link it. We'll link it down below. Oh, wonderful. But basically in Vietnam, I discovered there were a lot of professionals out there who were intimidated by writing. Mm -hmm. So I developed a workshop that helped them embrace their imagination and then they could go forth with greater confidence to do all future writing tasks. So that was my jam for a while. I wasn't making a lot of money and COVID hit and just like all of us kind of just shook my entire world. And I lost my job at the time while I was living abroad. I took a risk and and a friend was like, hey, you have all these technical skills in writing. Why don't you look at grant writing? And I was feeling out the industry. There weren't a lot of courses that I was like really excited about. I'm such a nerd for classes online, but (laughs) technical or like super expensive. And then I found you guys through YouTube and I was like, all right, they know what they're talking about. Pretty engaging. And it was a huge risk for me because it was a financial, like a financial jump when I didn't have a job, but it was just, you know, I could go all day talking about why you guys are awesome. But generally I was, I was very excited about the fact that I could get paid to learn a new skill. And that's exactly what happened. And I, and I started slow and I did the monthly plan and I ended up being able to pay back my course within six months, which was incredible because I was, you know, getting clients and learning to actually, these skills are amazing. It was something I already knew, but I got to help people in an industry that I never thought I could, you know, get paid to help people in. So that's the long answer of, you know, losing my job, taking a jump and realizing I had the skills and energy to become a full-time grant, grant writer. That's freelance. And yeah. you're 
Yeah, your journey. I mean, and you do still teach writing, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later because you have transformed a lot of unicorns experience with their own confidence in writing. And so we will chat about that. But I do want to stick with your freelance grant writing journey because it's been so incredible. I mean, really, you've been doing this for what we're I mean, I guess we're almost to the year, but eight months, nine months. Yeah, started in yeah. September of 2021. Woo! So crazy. Yes. It's so crazy. So tell yeah. us kind of what's your proudest accomplishment and then give us some background on like what's been happening in those nine months. Yeah. So I have to say when I first started, I was terrified. I had imposter syndrome to the max, but just like everything I do when I learn, I go full on ham research into it. So I watched all of the videos and took so many notes and just followed it to a T and I did my informational interviews and I, I just had so much success. I think because I'm really interested in people as a writer. So I'm really good at asking questions and drawing out those pain points. So I got really lucky in my first three informational interviews were automatically, they became paid funding strategies, which blew my mind. So that was in from September to October. So that was like right away. Yeah. And that gave me so much energy to continue with this and to continue with the course up to phase five, learning how to be, you know, just a businesswoman. And that led to, you know, another client, which now I am their like go-to freelance consultant. I do awesome. some of their project planning and I do all of their grant proposals and I did their funding strategy. So that was cool. I do have to say, I think that energy from the first three clients also gave me the courage to pitch pen to polished for you all. And I took all of those Absolutely. skills that I had learned <laughs> and, um, you know, that was an amazing experience. And then also just being able to take the methodology I learned that I love and has transformed my life and now be able to be a grant writing coach for you guys, for some of these smaller cohorts. So it's been a crazy nine month journey it really and it's still has. going. Yeah. There's no, like when you guys say that flywheel, when it starts, like you're not kidding and it's, it's super cool and I'm loving it. Oh, it's so exciting. So what is your absolute most proud moment? Like what's the moment that really means the most to you in this journey? Oh, is it corny to say pen to polished, even though that has nothing let's to talk do with about it. writing? Yeah. No, let's talk about it. I mean, I'm a total geek for, for writing. Like my dream is to just get paid solely to write. So being able to take all of my knowledge and hopefully fill a gap that I, I saw of people who are intimidated by writing in this field of being a grant writer, and then to come together with Christina Barr and co-create this amazing course, or I think it's amazing. It is. Made me really, it, thank you. It made me really proud. You know, yeah. it, was, it was a really amazing feeling to be able to turn that over to you guys and see it out in the community and out in the world. It was uh, I felt like it, I felt like it just, just so much joy. Absolutely. So okay. So it. tell us in your elevator pitch, you're getting in an elevator with a prospective unicorn or someone who's really scared of writing. What is pen to polish and what is the ultimate goal that we want people to walk away from, from taking that course? That is a great question. I would have to say that pen to polished learn to write well and say what you mean in grant applications. The purpose of this is to give people the confidence as well as the skills to become a better writer. Ultimately, it is teaching the craft of writing in the field of being a grant writer. Yes, and it's so good. There's case studies, there's like practice assignments. I mean, people are just loving how how purposeful everything is, right? And how integrative and just the amount of confidence that it gives when you get to practice and then really apply those skills in real life. So people are loving it within the collective and within our, our grant writing course. So it's so exciting. We're so thankful that you came and pitched that idea. Okay, so let's back up and go into that a little bit more. What, lots of people are scared that their writing won't be good enough to be a grant writer. So can you unpack that fear a little bit and maybe give us some tips on, on how we combat that fear? Yeah. I mean, this is something that, you know, every writer faces and every individual faces this fear of critique from outside, this fear of judgment. And it, and, and it definitely comes with being vulnerable enough to write, you know? Huh. And so I see this fear of writing in a lot of people when I do workshops and in the, um, excuse me, in the collective and that fear comes from, you know, not practicing mm -hmm. and also the intimidation of that blank page. So that writer's yes. block, if you will. Yeah. The little cursor blinking on that page. Oh, just <laughs> exactly. And 
you know, at some point you just have to jump in and you have to do it and not worry about, you know, the external factors. It's yeah. very much an internal process when you're writing you in the page. And, you know, I, I get the fear of writing, but also the beautiful thing about being a grant writer is that you don't have to be this fancy elevated writer using metaphors and analogies. You just have to write well. And there's a lot of misconception about what that means, but writing well just means, you know, answering the question, especially as a grant writer, answer the question, uh, writing simple sentences, and also just being concise, you know, concise and clear in what you're trying to say. And those three things are totally accomplishable by anyone, especially if you're trying to do that every day. So I say anyone who's intimidated by feeling like they're not good enough, you're absolutely good enough. And you're actually writing in many parts of your life every day. You don't realize it. Emails, Facebook posts, whatever it is, you're, you're practicing. Mm -hmm. you just kind of get, get over that intimidation and, and not build up this idea of what the writer is. So I, I would say just, you know, focusing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So if there's someone out there who is really wanting to dial a writing practice or even just get into a writing practice, maybe they want to journal more, or maybe they want to, they have an aspiration of writing a children's book or writing their own book. What is, what's like one thing we could do every day to build a writing habit? It's interesting that you said every day. I've been trying really hard for the past year to help writers realize that they don't have to beat themselves up if they're not mm. doing something every day. Yeah. And, and because yes. there is this idea that the habit is formed, you know, there's that what 21 day myth, they prove that that's not yep. true. Um, and then also people, you know, kind of they're hard on themselves when they miss a day. Yeah. So I like to tell writers, you need to figure out what makes you happy and passionate and you can do yeah. something small every day. Um, I would also recommend, you know, every writer will tell you, you have to read and write. That is just how you become better at this craft. Yeah. And I would also say read, write, and edit would be mm. another one. So maybe one thing that people can do is, so I think it's really hard to pick one thing, but the idea, even in the word practice, practice means you're doing something over and over. So again, not every day, but I would tell people, figure out what you want in the end, whether that's you want to be a writer and write a book, or maybe you just want to be better at the technical skills. You need to figure out your end goal and then kind of figure out how that fits into your life, whether that is journaling, whether that is reading more children's books, whether that is, you know, just taking notes every day of observations you see. Mm, I love that. But yeah, actively practicing the word practicing and using that. So I guess I don't have one tip, but find what works for you and work backwards and, you know, have some grace if you, if you miss a few days or if it's really hard at first. So what are some key takeaways from learning with us? You have come to us as like this great writer. So I'm curious kind of how our program has helped you, sh helped you shape as a great writer. Yeah. Love this question. And I feel like I could talk all day. I mean, I came to this skill with, you know, a technical background in writing and I had that part checked. I didn't realize how many other boxes of being a professional and building a business I didn't have checked mm. until I really joined the collective. You know, the collective is so important for me, that community aspect. I'm a Libra. I need that energy with people. And so having this supportive community that you guys provide was amazing. Some takeaways I would say, number one, I tell people a lot, uh, I tell people a lot, excuse me is learning to value my work. Mm. So I am very good at getting excited about a project, jumping in, helping people, volunteering my time, which is totally fine until it's your profession and you need to make money for what you do. And your course yeah. enabled me to feel confident and okay with telling people, hey, this is the work that I do. This research that I'm doing or this grant writing that I'm doing is time consuming, it is valuable. And I learned, and that has helped me in other parts of my life, which is amazing. And then the second takeaway would be, you know, just learning how to run a business. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm running my writing services business and I'm learning so much from you guys on how to be professional and do my taxes and, and other things like that, that you're teaching in this course that I think people don't realize you're providing more than just learning the skills of a grant writer, but also like how in the world do you build a business doing this? And it's so cool. And I love it. 
I love that. That is our, that's our hope, right? So Meredith and I's end of day mission is like, we want to just help more women try their hand at entrepreneurship. It's an incredible tool, right? To be able to cultivate freedom in our life. And I just, oh, I'm so, it just fills my cup all the way up to hear you say that. Because one of the reasons that we love our course and we value it at the price that um, it's currently yeah. chart, uh, yeah, it, the price of the collective is because we firmly believe that no matter what field you go into, you now have a foundation to freelance in any sort of technical skill that you have. And I just, oh yeah. Yeah. I, so it just fills my cup all the way up to hear you say that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. The price. Oh my God. Amazing. Like, like I said, I was intimidated at first, mm -hmm. unbelievably worth it. Like I have made my money back over and, and over again. And I love, I love, love, love all the skills that I've got. Oh, thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> you also wear a different hat with learn grant writing, and that is a grant writing coach specifically for uh, nonprofits or larger organizations who are hoping to train a bunch of people in grant writing kind of at one time. And these happen in six to eight week cohorts. Do you want to mm -hmm. talk about how you kind of have created this, this cohort space and what you do for these nonprofits? Sure. I would love to. So with my background in running workshops, again, I love that community energy. I love people. I had the pleasure of working with you guys and, and you had some people coming to you. They love your course and they wanted to, they wanted the course, but they also wanted a collective community, which we had to figure out how to provide. Yeah. So I stepped in and I said, Hey, I'm willing to run a, a workshop basically. So all the amazing training that you're offering within your course, I'm able to then come in. And over those six weeks, we do four live trainings. We come together and we just add to the material that they're learning. We, we talk a lot more about their real world grant related deliverables. We use a lot of applied learning. We nice. talk about questions that they have, very uh, peer to peer feedback, which has been amazing. So it's an opportunity for individuals of these nonprofits to learn the skills, but then also just have that atmosphere to grow together and to cultivate these skills as a community. And I am just absolutely loving it. And I think that the skills that they're learning, you know, they're going to go far beyond what we built for them in the six weeks. And a lot of them are working on projects that right now they need money for, you know, especially with COVID. So it's just great timing overall to help train a lot of people in the industry that need, that need those skills. It's so neat. And it's so valuable. Do you want to provide an example of the one that you're doing in California right now? So we can kind of visualize this. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, an organization called Rebuilding Together, and this is a national organization. I happen to get to work with Rebuilding, Get, Rebuilding Together East Bay Network. Okay. And what they're doing is they, they saw a need in their community. So they help build affordable housing for the unhoused individuals in the Bay Area. And they thought very human-centered design. They said, hey, we have yeah. these people in our community that are building programs. What if we also provided you know, a skill set for them that allows them to fund these projects that they're doing, as well as have a skill that if they wanted to build a career, they could. So there's 10 of us in it, and half are volunteers from the Rebuilding Together Network, and the other half are unhoused individuals. So people who have either been previously homeless or they are homeless now, and they are bringing themselves out of that situation. And it's been an amazing overlap to see them work together, yeah. to learn these skills, you know, to come to this, this training from such a deep background um, and, and a different background than me. And yet the passion that they have for building up their communities, you know, yes. It, I think it's driving them more than I've seen in any other cohort. So they're almost at the end of this and each of them has kind of come away with their own funding strategy and a project that Very they love. Cool. And they, 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 they're confident to go forth and, and make changes, real changes in their community. So that's been amazing to be a part of and to be, to be leading that. A hundred percent. And it's such an incredible example of centering the community. I mean, we talk about it, right. Of the people who are experiencing the problem, whatever it is, often have the key to solutions. And so trusting their voice and their experience, their knowledge, their brains, right? Trusting them is just so powerful. And so 
yeah, I just, I am, I'm really excited. It is so cool to see an actual example of an organization who is centering the community in their work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the people who are centered are enjoying learning, growing from all of this. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. So cool. All right. Well, let's dive into some one word ish answers. What is one word to describe your dream lifestyle? <laughs> hmm. Colorful. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Next vacation spot. Casablanca, Morocco. Where she's also moving. Okay. Yeah. Um, fiction or nonfiction? Oh, I can't answer that. I love both. I write nonfiction better. I love reading fiction. Anyway, that's my answer. Both. <laughs> what are you reading right now? On my desk. <laughs> this is so unfair. I have, I read multiple books at once. So I'm reading David Sedaris, Paul Calinthian, um, Writing Down the Bones and Walking on Alligators. I'm reading all, all nonfiction. Are all four of those nonfiction? Are you have? Actually, yes. So apparently I like nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> or those are just the desk space books. Maybe like the nightstand books are the, the fiction. Oh, you know, I do read different type, types of books throughout the day. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> um, okay. Last TV show you binged. Oh, The Office. Okay. Classic. All right. Yeah. And what's your superpower? My superpower. Besides being an awesome writer, I think my superpower is being able to hold a conversation with absolutely anyone. And I value that. It's really fun. I, yes, it is your superpower. I will validate that for you. <laughs> um, okay. And then last, last question. What would you tell anyone? What advice would you give to someone who is thinking about going after their dream or wanting to learn a new skill and they just are not sure what to do next? What's your advice to them? Oh. Well, you are the protagonist of your own story. So if it's not a book that you want to read, if it's not a path that you want a protagonist to take, then change your story and do what makes you happy. Just take that step and and be the be the hero of your own story. As corny as that sounds. No, it's corny and like beautiful because I'm like tearing up. Of course. Yes. Be the protagonist <laughs> in your own story. Yes. Okay. We have to end okay. there because it's so perfect. Oh, jo Rose, you have just been, exactly, it is a mic drop. You have been a joy to talk to. You're a joy every time I get to talk to you. We are so grateful for all of the knowledge that you share, not only with our community, but with every community that you interact with. It's really special to um, just know that you have an impact and you shine magic pretty much everywhere you go. So we're just delighted to be a part of that path. 